Here we go. It is raining on this Monday. Oh, it makes it like extra Monday-ish, doesn't it? Ugh, is what I say to that Monday. It's nice to have you with us on the CBSN Minnesota Daybreaker, formerly known as the 734. Chris, how long do you think we have to say that, formerly known as the 734? Chris is our producer here. One more week. This is the, all right, one more week of that, and then they'll come up with some other nonsense that they make me say at the start of this, but I do it happily. Here's, here's, show the weather. Show the weather. People are going to know I'm lying. All right, uh, the, it's not going to rain all day. It's not a total washout. By noon, it should clear. Uh, kind of a chilly, breezy day. Uh, nice night, though. Open the windows tonight. If you open the windows last night, uh, I'm sorry, because your house is wet, probably. It's been raining pretty hard, and it's coming down pretty hard again at 735 this morning. Let's talk about this. It is the last day of August, and I don't know about you. Some of you follow kind of the equinox, uh, you know, your vernal, your autumnal. And then your solstices, you live your life around uh, the sun. You uh, make your choice. Some of us live around uh, the record-keeping habits of meteorologists. And today, I believe, is the last day of meteorological summer. It's over. So we want you to describe this. How would you describe your summer in one word? One word, summer 2020. Uh, one word. Think about it, be clever, be creative, leave a comment on Facebook. I hope it was okay, at the least okay. It probably wasn't the summer any of us anticipated at the start of the year, that's for sure. So we'll read through a few of your summer-related uh, comments in just a moment. Let's get you up to date on some of the top stories we're following today. President Donald Trump plans to visit Kenosha, Wisconsin tomorrow in the aftermath of the Jacob Blake shooting. And the governor of Wisconsin says, we don't want you here. Here. Uh, Tony Evers is a Democrat, Donald Trump Republican, but Tony Evers wrote a letter to the governor and said, you know, would you reconsider this? The governor said he was concerned that the president's visit would be polarizing, would hinder healing. But the White House said last night that the president believes uh, by being there, he can help the city heal and rebuild. The president's rival is coming out of the basement. Democrat Joe Biden scheduled to visit Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania today. Uh, his campaign says he's going to use his speech to talk about safety. Law and order has kind of been the principal issue that the Trump campaign has been pushing. And Joe Biden will answer some of that today by asking if you are really safe in Donald Trump's America. Hundreds of protesters marching through downtown Minneapolis last night in solidarity with Kenosha, Wisconsin. A week ago, a police officer shot Jacob Blake in the back seven times. Here's a look from Sky 4. You see a fairly large crowd walking through the streets of Minneapolis. They did a couple of die-ins in front of uh, some major landmarks in the city. They took a knee at U.S. Bank Stadium, this outside the Federal Reserve, and they said the message was to send to the establishment that it doesn't own the people. That's why we talk about ideas like sovereignty. Do you have freedom of movement? Do you have freedom of economy? Do you have freedom of representation? If you don't, then you have to really start to find a passion about those things. Protest organizers also applauded the NBA players who boycotted playoff games last week, saying it's an example of the support Colin Kaepernick could have used when he was protesting. One of the nation's leading authorities on COVID-19 came to Minnesota this weekend. She says she's impressed, but she does say some of our more rural areas could be doing a better job. Sometimes in rural communities, they, because of their experience in March and April, see this virus is more of a New York City or a big city kind of phenomenon. No, this virus has gotten very much into rural areas. It's Dr. Deborah Burks. She was in St. Paul yesterday. She says, look, as we move forward on this, everybody's got to keep wearing masks. And remember the social distancing. I think the mask message has in some ways kind of overshadowed the social distancing mas message. That's your, your best thing to do. The governor... 
uh, did meet with Dr. Burks, and he's, uh, the governor's office said they asked for more flexibility in CARES Act funding. New leader for the Minnesota National Guard officially taken over today. This afternoon is the installation of the new Adjutant General, Brigadier General Sean Mankey. Governor Walls appointed him as the next Adjutant General. The last guy got promoted up to a big national job. U.S. Open begins today in New York. No spectators are allowed as part of efforts to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Coco Goff plays her first round match today. A Serena Williams begins her hunt for a record time 24 Grand Slam titles. Other big names are sitting out, including defending champion Rafael Nadal and women's number one, Ash Barty. United Airlines is getting rid of some of its change fees permanently. They're hoping that might motivate people to go ahead and book a flight. Nothing to change if you're like most of us and not flying. It's well applied to, you know, uh, those of us who book in the cheap seats, your economy cabin premium too. starting in January. You'll be able to go to like a same day standby flight uh, for free. United extending its waiver for tickets. Already they have a waiver in place that allows travelers to change flights as many times as they want with no penalty. MTV's Video Music Awards are still happening even though they don't play videos on MTV. In New York City last night, show open with a tribute to Chadwick Boseman. We dedicate tonight's show to a man whose spirit touched so many. He is a true hero, not just on screen, but in everything he did. His impact lives forever. Black Panther star died from colon cancer. Nobody knew he had it. So a, a shock, he kept it private. Died at the age of 43, so young, so talented on Friday. This is the first award show since uh, pandemic started that wasn't like a Zoom award show. No audience. They did performances at several locations around the city. Several artists used their platform to talk about racial injustice. Weekend won video of the year. Asked for justice for Jacob Blake and Breonna Taylor. There is also a tribute to frontline medical workers. Remember these guys from Mayo Clinic, Dr. Elvis Francois, Dr. William Robinson. It's cool to see them. Uh, as one of those honored the night really belonged to Lady Gaga, though. The Lady Gaga. Uh, she's amazing. Artist of the Year won the Tricon Achievement Award. Uh, Gaga and Ariana Grande performed their hit Rain On Me live for the first time. Look at this. Oh, which one's your favorite? I mean, the mask, the, the message here is wear masks. She said it every time she went up there. But uh, those are some pretty sick masks, don't you think? That one with the kind of audio, the sound waves, I think that's pretty fun. That's what I would like to anchor the news in. You know, some of you who hate masks, you think I don't know. You send me these dumb emails. You're like, hey, how come the news guy wears your mask? How come you don't have to wear a mask at the anchor desk? Okay, we can, you got us. We don't, it's in the law, I read it. All right, are you ready for today's talker? Are you ready? I'm looking forward to the creativity here. One word to describe your summer, summer 2020. Our producer extraordinaire, Chris, is here. Hi, Chris. We got some good answers this morning. All right, good. It's kind of all over the place. Some liking it, some not. Uh, I'm just gonna go down Let's the just list hear it. and yeah. read all of them. Uh, we got long, wrecked, long, wrecked, peaceful, peaceful, lousy, <laughs> lousy, chaotic. Yeah. It, it was uh, chaotic. Yeah. Tamara just said gratitude. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Yeah. Uh, we got confusing, adventurous, <laughs> fabulous, <laughs> lacking. Yeah. Um, Chad said it was wonderful. I'm like on board with that. all of these. It's like it's all of these are correct. I feel like all these words describe my summer. Uh, Judy said gardening. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Happy. Yeah, check. Um, we got housebound. Housebound, That's a good yeah. one. Boring. Boring, I'll also true. That. Yeah. Um, Cindy said dismal. <laughs> Peculiar, quiet, yeah. productive. Productive. That's good. Uh, no, one, no one tried to turn dumpster fire into one <laughs> word? No. No. No, all one right. One said upsetting. Upsetting. I that. Yeah. I think memorable, yeah. that's for sure. Like, it is going to be Lindsay very... said memorable. Yeah. Yeah. Never uh, going to forget this summer. There's a lot, yeah. of, a lot of crazy stuff that happened, right? Oof. It's been a... 
long I tell three you, months. You know what? Like, could we turn off the news spigot just for a minute? Like, remember when it, we would sit around and be like, gosh, what are we going to cover today? <laughs> what are we going to talk about? I haven't felt that way all year. I haven't felt like that since 2016. <laughs> long time. All right, fun, good answers, very good. We hope you have a great Monday. We appreciate you spending some of it with us here on the CBSN Minnesota Daybreaker. You can find us on any of your devices. Uh, I hope you uh, dial up CBSN Minnesota. It's a great spot to get your breaking news updates during the day. You can get us anywhere you stream video. We'll see you back here tomorrow.